In this session, we'll examine the concept of fault management and how state machines address this challenging task. A fault is exactly what it sounds like, something going awry, and practically any system can experience faults. They can be rather mundane, like a cash machine running out of money, or a car's tire pressure becoming too low. They can also be quite serious, such as a corporate data server crashing, or an aircraft engine stalling. When we encounter faults, an action is typically undesirable, so we must develop a contingency plan to handle them. We can use state machines simply to model and understand fault management systems, or in the case of software, we can use them as the starting point for the design process. It turns out that state machines work well as a template for fault management because they enable us to clearly define when a fault occurs, compartmentalize system behavior before and after the fault, and immediately switch between these modes of operation when we need to. To illustrate these concepts, we'll build a state transition diagram that models an ever more sophisticated power management system for a house. When everything is running normally, we want the system to behave in a particular manner, which fittingly enough, I'll refer to as the normal state. If we want, we can precisely specify what we expect to have happen in this state. This may be important for complicated systems where the behavior isn't immediately apparent. It may also matter to us when we use the state machine as a software development platform and want to indicate the code to invoke. But for now, we'll skip all that and assume you know what it means to be in the normal state, lights turning on and off when we need them. Now let's add a second state which represents our house without power. And since I'm short on creativity, I'll call this one no power. Once again, we'll skip the details of what we expect to happen in this state since it should be self-evident. This mode will represent how we'd like the system to behave after certain faults occur. So we add a transition line to capture the ability to switch modes and specify the criteria for when this happens. This is the fault condition and it can be expressed either as some externally driven event or as a logical expression. In this case, whenever the current exceeds 30 amps, the system immediately turns off the power. In effect, we've captured the behavior of an electrical fuse with this diagram. Now in certain engineering circles, you'll hear this term FDIR instead of fault management. This stands for fault detection, isolation, and recovery. A fuse can perform fault detection and isolation, but it doesn't really handle recovery since you have to go out and buy a new fuse when it breaks. A circuit breaker, however, fulfills all tasks of FDIR by providing a means of returning to normal operation. Even with this extra wrinkle, you may be wondering why this graphical approach of expressing fault management is better than the alternatives. Typically, designers opt for state machines due to scalability. They are most advantageous when a system has many, many faults and a corresponding number of modes that contend with them. Of course, your house doesn't have just one circuit breaker. There are lots of them and they are only in effect when power is available from the grid. During an outage, a standby generator would be activated if available. All of this would be much harder to understand if written up in a requirements document, and yet this is still relatively simple when compared to something like an aircraft's fault management system. For complex systems, state machines are faster to create, easier to maintain, and less likely to result in design errors. That's why people use them.